what are terpenes? Uh, terpenes are um, molecules that uh, are made by a bunch of different plants. Uh, cannabis makes terpene molecules. Citrus plants make terpene molecules. Evergreen plants make terpene molecules. Terpenes are made by a lot of different molecules, including cannabis. Uh, they do have a medical effect, even at very low concentrations. Um, and terpenes and cannabinoids actually share similar precursor molecules, so that they're, they're made from the same uh, basic ingredients, uh, and the plant's uh, biological systems end up making different uh, molecules. Um, it's the terpenes that are responsible for the smell of marijuana, its uh, flavors, uh, because the cannabinoids, THC and CBD, don't have any smell to them. So uh, when we are smelling uh, the terpenes, whether it's a lemon kush or it's a very piney fragrance, uh, those are the terpenes uh, and not the cannabinoids. Um, Terpenes uh, are common to human diets. Uh, they are listed by the regulatory agencies as generally recognized as safe. Uh, they uh, behave very safely, have a long history of use in humans. Um, topically, they're very safe fresh. Uh, there can be some minor irritation uh, if the product is old. Uh, terpenes can sometimes, uh, on rare occasions, cause minor skin irritations. Uh, uh, nothing ever harmful happens from them. Um, and uh, they uh, are, the, what they do is they interact with uh, different enzyme systems in the body, uh, neurotransmitters, uh, second messenger systems, um, and these are part of the ways that they create physiologic effects. Uh, the cannabis plant can have very wide variety of terpene uh, expressions, uh, even within the same plant itself. Uh, terpene concentration uh, will vary throughout processing. Uh, it can actually, uh, the terpene levels can raise uh, as the plant dries. Um, and also, uh, as the plant ages, it loses, as the dried flower ages, it will lose some of its smell. Those are the terpenes, so that when you open a nice new jar of really s uh, smelly flowers that can kind of permeate the room, those are the terpenes literally leaving the plant and going into the air. Uh, they do have medical benefit at very low concentrations. Um, and the plant, because of the way it uses them, uh, will, will be fairly variable. For example, upper leaves. Upper leaves tend to um, be uh, preyed upon by insects a lot of the time. So uh, the plant will put out anti-insecticide um, uh, uh, terpenes, such as uh, limonene or pinene. Uh, versus in the lower plant, um, might be more appropriate for it to put some of the bitter sesquiterpenes in uh, to prevent grazing from uh, forest, woodland, uh, uh, mammals, animals, uh, things like that. So uh, different uh, terpene levels in the upper uh, versus the lower, uh, and the terpene levels can change throughout processing. Uh, also when you are preparing or making your own medicine with cannabis, a lot of people bake with cannabis, you'll notice that the room starts to smell like marijuana after it's been baking for a while. Those are the terpenes in the air. They've left the plant and are not uh, useful for medicine when they've done that. So one uh, tip when processing and making home medicine uh, is to keep the baked goods covered, uh, which would be something you normally wouldn't do. Say, for example, when you're cooking brownies, you would normally have them lifted up, but it might be appropriate to cover them with foil, for example, to keep some of the terpenes in there. Uh, terpenes are very effective, even at low concentrations. Uh, inhalation method, uh, we have some good human studies on, um, and terpenes can be effective topically and orally as well. So they're very versatile, uh, and they complement the cannabinoids uh, and create synergy. Uh, so we create synergistic effects depending on how we use them. So terpenes are uh, generally volatile molecules, which means they like to go into the air. Um, and because of that, when, when one is processing terpenes or even just storing your flour at home, it's very important to keep them tightly sealed. Glass containers, I think, are best for this. Uh, how broad are the variabilities in terpenes and where do you find higher concentrations? Um, they can be quite broad, uh, the, the different levels of concentrations. Uh, and if you look at any uh, kind of the um, uh, laboratory analyzed uh, fingerprints. A lot of labs are doing terpene analysis. You'll see a pretty wide range of, of variables. 
Uh, the human smell and the palate can be very effective at detecting certain terpenes uh, and certainly uh, combinations of flavors. Uh, uh, in wine, uh, the wine tasting world, uh, for example, sommeliers uh, have training. Uh, and when you go to the test for the sommeliers, you're literally smelling the wine and you should be able to tell not only what type of wine it is, but what year it was grown and what soil it was grown in. You'll notice when you first uh, purchase something at the store uh, and you take it home and you open it and you smell it, it might have a very powerful or pungent uh, aroma to it. Again, the terpenes. But two or three weeks later, especially if that jar has been opened, closed, opened, closed, uh, those levels uh, can change. Um, so processing can change it. Uh, the type of soil that is grown in can, uh, can change it. Uh, conditions of humidity and temperature during the time of growing can affect it. Um, so uh, uh, terpenes tend to do uh, well in uh, soils with a little less nitrogen. Um, the French have a saying about wine, uh, to make great wine, the grapes must suffer. And I think that they're talking about real hot days, real cold nights, and some of the plant molecules in the grape, the proanthocyanidins, are much more expressed uh, during stress. Uh, some of the plant chemicals are more expressed during times of stress. Uh, so terpenes are quite variable, but use your nose, and uh, the nose can become very sophisticated, and also we have uh, beautiful laboratory analytics now. Um, some of the displays I've seen are quite nice. Uh, in terms of uh, gauging the various different levels. Uh, terpene concentrations can vary, uh, and this is one large reason why some people do much better with certain types of cannabis than others. And again, that's a very individual, specific choice. So, um, and then on the medical side, uh, there is a very, people have very different reactions to certain types of uh, cannabis, and a lot of that is the terpene profile. So understanding as a consumer, either a recreational consumer or a medical consumer, what works for me, what doesn't work for me, that takes a lot of time. It also takes uh, experimenting with a lot of different products. Botanical medicine is a much more fuzzy kind of a slow medicine uh, and it does require a lot of time and it requires at least somebody helping the patient who knows what they're doing, who can make proper suggestions. The patient can do a lot on their own um, uh, through uh, diaries uh, of uh, dosaging, strain selection, etc. Um, but a lot of the time an expert can sometimes be very helpful to make suggestions. Uh, and the terpenes are a good example of this. Huge variability, not only even within similar uh, chemotypes of the plant, but also within the same plant itself. Um, and then uh, the cannabis one week is going to be a different uh, type of cannabis two or three weeks later, especially uh, if uh, it gets, uh, is dry and exposed to open air and a lot of the terpenes can escape. Terpene production is more genetically than environmentally determined, uh, so strain is very important. Um, and uh, cloning uh, can produce similar results, but there is an environmental component um, terpene production increases with light exposure, so think of wine being stressed in the heat of the sun kind of a thing, uh, and decreases with soil fertility, uh, but it does increase uh, uh, terpene yields are higher when the plants are deprived of nitrogen. Um, so to maintain uh, tight tolerances, good manufacturing pro uh, practices, uh, like you would a pharmaceutical, for example, uh, Cannabis does require the, the vegetative processing of the plants to really have tightly controlled uh, temperature, light, and humidity. Uh, the more sophisticated um, uh, recreational grows are definitely doing a lot of this. Home grows maybe not so much, um, but realize that there are environmental factors that definitely do affect it and that also genetics are the same. So again, um, protecting your phenotypes, uh, sharing that genetic information, 
uh, is an important part of the terpene, uh, whole terpene profile. So uh, when we look at studies, uh, we know that uh, rodents, uh, laboratory animals, uh, show there can be actually pretty profound effects on their activity. Uh, you can have the animals in a, in a uh, relatively lethargic state and you can introduce terpenes and you can observe increases in movement and movement patterns. Uh, very obvious and this can happen at very low concentrations. Um, so that definitely suggests a pharmacologic effect on their nervous systems uh, as, lo as low as uh, 5 nanograms per ml. Um, and then we also see uh, positive effects at undetectable levels in the blood um, which could be because the terpenes, even though they come in at already low concentrations, they distribute pretty widely in the body. If it's in the nervous system, they really go into the lipids uh, pretty quickly. So the body can absorb a lot of the terpenes and take them uh, right out of the plasma, but we can still have effects at very low uh, concentrations. Um, some studies show strong serotonin activity, which could be partially responsible for the effects on mood, pain, and sleep. Uh, and we see this a lot with some of the, uh, quote, indica strains. Uh, and just a caveat, we know that we're going to be changing that nomenclature soon, but certainly some types of cannabis will make people much more sleepy than other types of cannabis. A lot of this is uh, involved with the terpene profiles. I think that when we have an educated palate, we can learn to smell the types of cannabis that tend to work best for us. Um, some people will notice that they do much better with certain types of strains than others. Uh, and again, back to the genetic component, a large part of terpene production is genetic. So uh, utilizing genetic information can uh, potentially be helpful for folks as well. The terpenes, uh, we'll start with myrcene. Myrcene, also known as beta myrcene, uh, is a terpene that is common to a lot of uh, other plants. Um, lemongrass has high levels of myrcene in it, as do mangoes uh, and hops. Um, uh, hops and, and lemongrass are known to have uh, sedative and relaxing effects, uh, and uh, hops is actually a, a cousin of cannabis in the plant world. Um, so when combined with THC, um, especially, there's a synergistic effect with myrcene and it really can help produce sedation. Myrcene is one of the molecules responsible for couch lock. So uh, for those people who really like an indica to really get into their body and feel relaxed, that a lot of the times is a high myrcene component. Uh, it does have <coughs> some uh, pretty remarkable physiologic effects as a standalone molecule. Um, it's anti-inflammatory through prostaglandin pathways. So anytime you're using an anti-inflammatory approach, there are different uh, inflammatory pathways. And when you hit more than one, you have this potential for synergy as well. Um, so also in addition to an anti-inflammatory is a good uh, pain reliever. I mentioned the sedative aspects of it. Uh, it is a muscle relaxant. Um, and uh, uh, in animal studies, myrcene blocks uh, liver cancer from forming. Um, this is, I think, really interesting and uh, we will attach a, a pretty technical link to a pretty technical article on terpenes and liver cancer. Uh, I'm not suggesting that that's the case, but uh, just in terms of liver protection, uh, thinking of medicines, we normally think of medicines as things that hit the liver hard. Uh, acetaminophen, Tylenol, for example, can literally cause liver cancer. Uh, this is a pain relieving molecule that actually in animal studies is preventing it. So, um, and again, uh, potential for synergy with other pathways, whether that be for sleep induction, or for pain relief, or for muscle uh, relaxation, for spasticity, uh, this is a pretty good molecule and is shared uh, by a bunch of other plants. Uh, on that line, uh, sometimes it, it, it could theoretically be much cheaper to get terpenes from, say, uh, lemongrass or mangoes uh, than it would be to hunt for a cannabis plant and try to create one that's super high in a certain level. Uh, sometimes I recommend that my patients would enjoy like a mango smoothie or a, a mango drink with the cannabis uh, uh, or a lemongrass tea along with the cannabis. There are ways that we can utilize 
uh, these chemicals very affordably from other plants because uh, cannabis is still a pretty expensive plant if you think about it. Uh, D-limonene, uh, also limonene is, is uh, what it's called. Um, this is, uh, has a, a very lemony smell to it. So even something like a lemon fresh pledge, something that kind of smells clean and bright. Uh, we know in human studies that we can take depressed patients, we can put them in a room, we can expose them to the, uh, the limonene uh, at very low levels and measure their depression on something called a Hamilton uh, depression score. And you can literally see the before and after their scores, uh, the scores on the depressions uh, are reduced. Uh, they also reduce their use over time of antidepressant medications. Uh, we, see, uh, we see a lot of folks changing their medications with cannabis. Uh, I recommend any antidepressant drug to be done under the uh, supervision and care of a physician. But, what the science is showing is that this terpene is actually having an effect. Um, it, limonene is a very potent antidepressant through inhalation. What I like to use the lemon fragrances for, or if people are having a bad reaction to THC, a lot of the times the lemon can kind of lift them out of that dour mood. I don't know if you've ever had an experience of trying a particular strain and then all of a sudden you're in a bad mood or you're worried about something. That may or may not be this, but if you see that same pattern happening over and over again with the same strain, that could be indicative. Uh, one thing that can be very helpful are some of the lemon uh, flavors uh, with that. Um, uh, limonene does affect serotonin pathways, so there is a mechanism that uh, physiologically makes sense why it would be having these anti-anxiety properties. Uh, it can help with GERD. Uh, topically can be helpful uh, against acne bacteria um, and uh, in laboratory and cell tissue studies actually causes breast cancer lines to self-destruct. So it literally turns on an auto-destruction uh, program in the, in the breast cancer cells. Again, not in humans, we need, we need more study. Um, and I find it to be very synergistic, especially with THC, uh, for folks who tend not to like THC but may need a little bit of THC uh, because that helps with their pain. Um, it's a good uh, terpene to have for daytime use. Pinene. Um, pinene is one of my favorites, not because of what it does, but because I can just smell it so easily. So a lot of the times I don't even need a, a a lab to know that it's there. Um, it is anti-inflammatory through prostaglandin pathways. Uh, it also acts as a bronchodilator, which means it opens the airways, which can be good for asthmatics, um, especially uh, 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 good for folks who have may have trouble with inhalation, uh, uh, a pinene-oriented product where they want to do inhalation might make that a little bit better. Uh, pinene does aid in memory. That's one of the places where I think it can be most useful. People who tend to get a little dumb or stupid when they're using too much THC, the pinene can kind of help neutralize that uh, as along with the CBD. Um, and it does aid the memory as an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, so we uh, know the mechanism about that. Um, so when I think of pine, or, uh, I, when I smell pine, I'm thinking, oh, that's good. That the THC high is going to be more tempered, less uh, of a stupefaction, less likely to uh, take the IQ down. Beta caryophylline. Um, beta caryophylline. The evolutionary function of, of this terpene, uh, is the plant uses it to stop itself from being eaten either by insects or, or even uh, mammals, uh, herbivores. Um, and at the same time, uh, there is a predatory lacewig insect that when it smells beta caryophylline, it's attracted to the plant. So it's actually repelling the insects that it doesn't like and it is attracting the insects that eat the insects that it doesn't like, kind of like a ladybug will uh, um, uh, take care of uh, insects in a beneficial way. Very common to black pepper. Uh, Beta-caryophylline is a terpene that is common to black pepper. 
um, and also Copa Iba balsam. Uh, it has a good uh, anti-inflammatory activity at low level uh, and can be good in a topical product. Linalool is uh, a terpene that is common in lavender. Uh, and many people are familiar with lavender. It's become very popular, lavender pillows, very nice, uh, relaxing smell for a lot of folks. Um, it's believed that linalool mod, uh, modulates uh, glutamate and GABA uh, neurotransmitters, uh, so largely responsible for some of the anti-anxiety effects of it, and also it is a sedative on inhalation in, in a rodent model. So we talked about earlier on limonene in a rodent model getting the animals to move faster. Uh, the linalool will slow them down. Um, and it uh, is an analgesic via uh, adenosine receptors. So it is working on a different pathway from the prostaglandins uh, uh, that a lot of the other terpenes run on. Um, I think of this as a sedative, uh, something that along with myrcene can really help with a couch lock. Uh, and again, the terpenes can be present in the cannabis plant or they can come from another plant such as lavender. Uh, uh, we don't necessarily need to have them uh, together. Um, I don't recommend this, uh, but some folks will actually pepper, not, not pepper in, but some folks will actually sprinkle in some, a little bit of lavender flower in with their smoke to add a little bit of a flavor. Um, I, don't, I don't know very much about the smoking of lavender, but from a terpene perspective, that certainly uh, would make sense uh, on one level. Uh, but again, a regular lavender diffuser in the atmosphere or even a lavender candle or something like that can have a positive uh, influence um, in the room for uh, patients or recreational users who are using cannabis. Again, this is something that tends to be calming and sleep inducing. So think couch lock, think uh, sleep aid, that kind of thing. I, I do think we have a, a shortage of experts in the field and, and, and this specialized knowledge is important too because it's not about whether or not cannabis works a lot of the times, it's how to get it to work better uh, or best. And when we have a shortage of experts, uh, the market doesn't behave like it should because the consumers are not experiencing the uh, positive effects that they could be experiencing if they are getting good education and good advice. And again, this being a plant, it's a very fuzzy thing. As you can see from all the information in our videos here, uh, little things make a difference. So, so what is important is quality of products, good selection of products, folks who can make good recommendations for those products, and then consumers who are educated enough to make intelligent choices to choose a product A, B, or C and to try them out and see which one may work best for them. Um, so I do think that the whole industry suffers with a lack of expertise and I, I, I hope that part of what we're doing here is to kind of raise the overall level of awareness so that people can make good choices uh, out there for this uh, botanical. So again, with botanical medicine, there are so many things uh, to consider and um, it is not so much having an ideal perfect product, but having the patient be aware and be able to make choices uh, and adjustments. So again, knowledge is a very critical thing and that's one of the things we're here doing at Medical Marijuana 411.